Uh, let's see. Robert, the collector. Yeah, you can see that bend. Oh, I was referring to my darkness and blaze cards. Kind of had like this weird printing defect. Um, what would you recommend to collect in Pokemon? Um, I feel like I can't. I'm not going to point to it. I, I, I feel like base set, maybe base set won't go up. Or base set 2 won't go up by much. But considering how old it is, uh, considering how much is probably out there, it feels like it's very undervalued. Maybe it'll never come to where it should be. In my opinion but uh yeah i feel like yeah psa 10 probably pretty probably pretty expensive um but you know if you go down to let's say eight even seven seven you look at seven i bet you can pick up a lot of the set for like 20 bucks especially if you're patient um but uh beyond that when it comes to uh again like you know use pokemonprice.com just take a look at historical data and just guess like all right why would this go up like is this going to go up in the near term how aggressively and just try to make decisions based on that and i just kind of do the research and when it comes to like modern product it's just don't buy into big hype i did that with reshi's art i did it with shiny charizard when i purchased the bgs 9.5 i got bailed out with the crazy price hikes that happened in the past like six months um and you know yeah just have the conversation with yourself all right where is it right now what do you think it's going to do in the next six months a year and just try to go based on that um and for anything modern don't pay too much especially for sealed product mon or uh subscribe to the pokemon tcg deals subreddit follow our discord uh we have a channel just for deals where i post up basically anything that i buy is sealed uh, there's like one vendor that's not open to like everyone so unless it's that everything that I buy I almost always post in the discord uh, Almost to my detriment where like hey this thing's on sale guys like send the link out there And then I go back to bank my own purchase and it's gone uh, Let's see Brando asks, what do you think of hoarder slash scalpers? Um, interesting question uh, So I think I like Google like what is the definition of scalper? I guess it's like someone that buys something to sell it for an immediate short-term gain or something like that um i, I feel that as long as the following is true i don't have a problem with almost anything as long as when things come out their initial release i'm talking like sealed product and stuff like that as long as it's done in a fashion that everyone has to some degree equal opportunity to buy it i usually don't have like a problem uh i'm not sure if this happens but I, sometimes i feel like this happens if i ever try to get tickets to like a show or something and like sign in once it opens and like all right everything's wiped out i wonder like man i wonder if they can make like a bot to do this and just buy up as many as they can like to me that's not fair um but everything else again if you go to that subreddit go to the discord all right sorry uh girlfriend called me i had to help her out with something <clears throat> so i'm not sure where we left off but as far as hoarders and scalpers go um yeah, I suppose it is possible for people to have just like huge amounts of stuff and actually affect the market to a significant degree. I suppose all that's possible. Um, I'm not too, feel like I'm not too worried about, especially with modern product. Uh, it's very clear that Pokemon is willing to do reprints as necessary. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some people that don't like it, but I'm all for it. Makes it more accessible to everyone. Like, and whatever happens affects the prices like that's all secondary so yeah as long as you know i to a degree everyone has a fair opportunity again i just go to the subreddit go to and I list things on the deals channel in the discord um i think to to a very to a good degree like everyone has fair chance to pick up the product yes maybe people can't buy as much and then it gets sold out um but yeah you did have a shot to pick up what you could then from there i feel like it's just supply and demand so however it plays out i feel like that's like it makes sense to me so i can't complain too much uh if this is in regards to like how crazy high prices are going again it's supply and demand i have like I guess some props i have three basic charizards here six seven and eight and uh, i think i bought the eight for like a hundred dollars maybe like three four years ago and now these things are going for like five hundred dollars and I don't know, I, I feel like some people are like, oh, it's ridiculous how, like, this card should be $100. And it's like, yeah, if it's $100 and a 1,000 people want to buy it, but there's only a 100 of them, like, the prices will just regulate themselves. And 
I don't know, everything, it, the rest of it just makes sense to me. So I feel like as long as everyone has the same opportunity to pick things up, at least for a new product, um, it all just kind of makes sense to me. Uh, JNL asks, what happened, what helped you the most when growing your channel? <clears throat> um, I feel like one thing that I dramatically underestimated was like this sense of community kind of thing. Uh, so like whether it's whatever the community as far as your fellow Poketubers or you know within a single channel's community like the <laughs> whatever squad or whatever um, you know I always thought that was kind of corny and you know didn't think too much of it I thought I was like yeah I thought it was corny beyond anything else um, and then you know like shout out to Pokemon Lover 95 so hey you know what if, what do you think we created our own discord server for the channels like yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not sure what, like, what will come of it. But then I feel like it's a big success. I'm really happy with how things have grown. And I feel like we have our own community, whether it's in the Discord or during Twitch streams. And I just very much underestimated that. So, um, you know, the quicker you can and the better you are embracing your community or your fellow, like, the greater PokeTuber community, I feel like that makes a big difference um, as far as just kind of, like, bring awareness to the channel not only bring awareness but like making it a whole making it a, a community um so hope that helps uh what is very similar vein what is important to a successful channel uh obviously what i kind of just mentioned but then i think the most important thing is just having pure passion for what you're doing uh if this i kind of mentioned this before but if this is not a job it's not like a part-time job for me it was a part-time job it's one that doesn't actually make any money so it has to be pure passion and you have to display that to the viewers as well and then things will kind of like continue to grow in my opinion collecting andy asks what's the card you love the most in your collection so we're going to go back to that story i mentioned again it's like a classmate of mine he just bought i spent all his money on some fossil packs and uh he's like oh do you want one i was like oh, i can't take that and he just gave it to me and i pulled a hitmonlee first edition hollow kind of like maybe it was the day release of fossil and like definitely a cherished card not only for like all the sentimental reasons it's actually some kind of error printing i tried to look it up a couple times uh, i would show it to you but it's currently off at psa and i think it's called like a cigar printing error i have no idea what that means uh, but I believe if you Google it, you'll find like a couple eBay listings and it's the way that I would describe it, it's kind of like a smudge and some other ones I've seen have not consistent. Uh, so like part of it is on the hollow and it's almost looked like it's the non hollow version for like the certain strip, but it goes beyond, I think the picture as well. So it's very strange. Um, pretty cool. It's like, Hey, first edition fossil, some kind of printing error. I'm not sure if it's like one of those like errors that like TCA is always chasing. Uh, but definitely for many reasons one of the most prized cards in my collection as far as sealed product you can see it behind me there's the rocket box there's the base set booster box all right let's see anthony asks what deck besides control do you hate to face in standard expanded and legacy uh so i don't know or i don't know anything about legacy i think it's something i would like to dabble into in at some point but i imagine there's some insane strategies in there <clears throat> just with the uh, all the different cards you have at your disposal as far as standard expanded um anything that prevents the opponent from doing what they need to do um just for me i don't really enjoy it for obvious reasons uh yeah i kind of just you know play to have fun you know i guess not exactly entirely motivated i'm playing just simply the best deck um you know i'm there to just hang out with you guys and you guys teach me things and uh yeah we just have a blast but um, anything that kind of prevents that is real pain, and I don't really enjoy facing it. Ironically, I have been, or I used to play a lot of good amount of Luck Metal with Lucario Mel Metal and Four Hammers, so maybe a bit hypocritical on my point, on my part, but um, I, I feel like what's enjoyable is like, all right, I'm gonna do my thing to get knockouts. You're gonna do your thing to get knockouts. I'm just gonna <laughs> duke it out, and whoever's left standing is the winner. That just sounds like a good time to me, so things that prevent that from happening um, as their strategy are just less entertaining for me. Uh, I imagine they're more entertaining for 
the people that are running them, but I usually not, but don't like to play them. I feel like Expanded, like Trev Noir is a good example. Probably really cool deck. I'm pretty sure I can build it. I'm very un, not motivated to play it. I'd rather play that new list that Get Right showed us, that Tina Chomp list. It's like, go second. There's a good chance you can knock out whatever's in front of you. Um, just guns blazing versus, all right, I'm going to bring you down to, what is it, like two cards or something crazy like that and just play off the top of the deck. Good luck. Um, yeah, so hope that helps or hope that makes sense. Bromeo asks, have there been any changes to recent meta uh, since I've been gone? Dragapult, Picaram, Combo, Zacian. I feel like Dragapult has fallen off a cliff, which is interesting because, you know, it's the new set hasn't come out yet and i just feel like dragapult all of a sudden is very poorly positioned uh peak around still really strong uh with cards before rotation there's like a couple insane lists i saw um playing like a new still like pre-daa peak around list that get showed us and it feels really strong uh combo is i never been, been a big fan of combo Zacian. i feel like it's kind of gimmicky but it's just like this thing can win at any point I need to create like a clip of it, uh, but I was in a match and I basically brought them to like, all right, we, we, we have game on board. Uh, the only way for them to win, we took out their Zacian. They still have, uh, I think it was like three, three prizes or something, no AC. And it's like, all right, the only way for them to win is for them to put down a Zacian energy saucer, saucer, and then like Giovanni or something. And it's like, I just marnied you as well. So you need like perfect cards to get out of this. And then like we watched the whole thing unfold before our eyes, uh, play like half of that stuff into a Dedenne and then like eventually they pulled it out and won. I was like, oh my gosh, that was insane. Like you can never count combo Zacian out. And I wasn't even mad for losing them. I was like, dude, two thumbs up. That was so sick. Very well played. <clears throat> Uh, all right, return the Pokemon Master says, did you get my question from a few videos ago? I had to do some searching and he asked, Turtle, you offer PSA submissions and pre-grading services? Uh, the answer is yes, but I only offer that to my Patreon. So we do have a Patreon page and if you are a Patreon for VIP tier, uh, basically if you send me the cards, I'll let you know what I think and take care of it from there. If you do want it graded, I basically charge you what I would get charged, I'll take care of the shipping and the, you know, getting the order in, the sleeves and all that kind of stuff, I'll take care of all that for you. AFL Everything says, congrats, uh, when did you start collecting Pokemon cards? Yeah, so again, um, they said jungle area, era kind of went to about Rocket, uh, then kind of stopped. I distinctly remember actually, there used to be, a, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if it's still around, but Poke Order, <laughs> and like looking at the gym, gym stuff, I was like, oh, I kind of stopped collecting but i kind of want to buy these but i don't have the money so i didn't uh so that's kind of when it's phased out and then back uh again around like burning shadow like or kind of like early-ish sun and moon uh white bear beppo uh hashtag one one thousand turtles what is your favorite and least favorite typing uh so less relevant to the tcg i'm always a fan of ice stuff uh, and I feel like there's not a lot and it's like Lapras for example is like kind of like a hybrid and maybe, I'm not, I kind of consider Lapras water than ice um, so I feel like ice is kind of like a niche thing and I always fan of that things I'm less I like the way you kind of phrase this least favorite so I don't dislike any of them but I guess my least favorite might be metal and maybe fairy uh, now there's like distinct fairy but I feel like a lot of them just kind of like or normal Pokemon that's like, eh, like eh, let's just consider this a fairy Pokemon as well. And metal, they're not bad, but I don't know, I, I think uh, it's like an engineering part of me, engineer part of me, it's like, how does this happen? Like, how does this 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 Pokemon just like metal, I associate like metal with something like man-made. Uh, so kind of a weird reason, but I guess that would be my answer. Yu-Gi-Oh fan. What is the most expensive item in your collection? So that could be that booster box. That one over there. Uh, and then after that, as far as cards, so I uh, wasn't sure if I show this in like that video that Winter BT was suggesting, but I do have a base set first edition Charizard ungraded. I still need to get that graded. Uh, it might not be, it's not definitely not a 10, definitely not a nine. 
maybe an eight. I feel more likely it's like a seven, if I'm unlucky, six. Uh, so most likely it's that base set booster box. It could be a first edition Charizard though. But we will see. We'll see and I don't know how long it takes to get those graded. Um, let's see, Master Mike. Uh, hashtag 1000 Turtles. Also, do you play any other card games? And if so, which ones do you play? I am a huge fan of Magic the Gathering. I uh, got introduced to it in college and fell in love with the game. Uh, I, was in, I was in school, so I didn't have a lot of disposal income. Picked up whatever cards I could. Then with the, like, oh, maybe I can play Standard or something. Everything rotated and I didn't really have a good deck anyway because I was buying packs. Um, that's like, oh my gosh, all these cards can't be played and definitely can't compete in Modern or Legacy or something like that. Uh, so purely became like a spectator, kind of slash casual player, but I feel like that's just a perfect, like such a well-designed game. And between stuff that I'll watch on YouTube is like probably like a 50-50 between Pokemon stuff and Magic the Gathering. Uh, as far as competitive content, historically I've watched way more Magic the Gathering content than Pokemon. So definitely, very, and I, I don't really open stuff anymore, uh, but I do like purchase some singles every once in a while. I do purchase some like sealed stuff, uh, as far as magic cards go. And that's basically it. I mean, I did play, uh, I'm blanking on the name, that card game where you buy a deck and it's like each deck is unique. Um, played that for like a little bit. I bought a deck and played with like a cousin. And we tried like some Star Wars game, but nothing ever really stuck. I have some Force of Will cards. Uh, Corcho asks, what is your favorite full art card? It's got to go to some Japanese promos. Ah, so many to pink from the pon like the Pancho Pikachu is way up there. Probably my favorite has to be the Mario collab. Let me just make sure we're recording. Yes, we are. <laughs> uh, Mario and Luigi, those cards are so cool. Such a cool collab and probably one that won't happen again. Pokemon doesn't do that too often. Sometimes they do stuff with, like a company like Uniqlo or Adidas but rarely a other kind of game. So the fact that they did that was awesome and that promo has to be the best full arts. Uh, when it comes to English, you know, the typical stuff, uh, Burning Shadows Charizard, shiny, or the Shiny Charizard GX for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, Japanese, just the Japanese promo game leaps and bounds better than the, US, the English one. Impasse, realistic question, how much money you spent on Pokemon? Uh, so I don't really know. Uh, if I did know, or if I could find out, which I probably, eh, that would be tough. I'm not sure I would want to know. I do think it's probably a good idea going forward for me to kind of like track that stuff as far as purchases, whether it's uh, single cards or sealed stuff, just to monitor that. Just, you know, it's probably a fiscally smart thing to do, just to kind of like help with like budgeting stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. To be honest, if, if I did know, I probably wouldn't answer that question anyway. Uh, I'll probably more than I should have. Let's leave it at that. Scipio asks, what was your first MTG set? So when I first got into it at the time, I believe it was like Scars. Uh, Scars of Mirrodin, Mirrodin of Siege, and then like when I finally understand what's going on, I <laughs> I, follow, I, I can follow the, the game and stuff like that. Then New Phyrexia came out. Went to like the LGS and picked up a couple packs, but uh, like that, that lore or like that stuff, like those cards, the the theme, like that was so cool. I love and I really like artifact stuff. Then the whole Phyrexia thing was really cool, and I was really into that. And then like after that, what was it like Innistrad or something? It's like mm, this is the werewolves, vampire stuff, whatever it was didn't really do it for me. So I think that's kind of like I started losing interest, like. Yeah, the, the thematic part of it just was not nearly as good as uh, Mirrodin and Phyrexia. Uh, Get Rex says, origin story of your name. Yeah, so we talked about why I like turtles. Uh, again, random stranger, like a kid in Florida, won it from a crane game and offered it to me. Uh, I was like, hey, do you want this? And complete stranger. And that was just, you know, I feel like a lot of memories that stick to me, just like these... Uh, you know, these crazy acts of kindness, and those really, you know, stay with me. Uh, but then, as far as the origin of I want a turtle, so uh, my ethnicity is um, I am Chinese, and my Chinese nickname, so like my immediate family or like close relatives, what they'll actually call me is 
Wa, which is my Chinese, or it's not my Chinese name, it's just like my Chinese nickname. Uh, so like W-A-H, and then uh, I was in college, and me and my girlfriend, we went to some kind of show, and it was before the show started, we were just talking, kind of like brainstorming, because I was trying to, I don't remember for what, but I was going to come up with a new name for like some game or something. And like, it's like, oh, well, we like turtles, and like people refer to me as Wa, so that's where it comes from. I Wa, W A H, then Wana, we turn that to Wana, and then A, turtle, so that's like the etymology I Wa and the turtle. Um, obviously, kind of like a play on words. And so I thought that was like a perfect name. I would say the only downside of it is people ask, like, oh, what's the name of your channel? Like, let's say it happened at League or something. It's like, oh, it's I want a turtle. And like, they could probably process, like, oh, I want a turtle. But then they can't really find it. So, like, I would say that's the downside of like how I kind of had my Chinese nickname uh, embedded in the I want a turtle name is it's a little hard to get people to find it. I think because I actually printed some like business card things like so, all right, th this is what it's called. This is how it's spelled because uh, beyond like me spelling it out for you, you might not be able to find it. All right, let's see what set slash cards you think are worth picking up. Uh, I kind of think we kind of talked about this. I do think. Yeah, I'm always surprised that base set two, <laughs> surprisingly affordable with how old it is, um, but it's just not worth that much. Um, beyond that, like, yeah, when it comes to what to pick, it's kind of hard to answer, but it's just like, take a guess at what the progression is going to be and dictate your purchase on that, or just stay up to date what's coming up, what's new. I think that's particularly relevant on the Japanese side, like first first sighting for me of Ultra Shine GX, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Let me let me pick up as many cards as I can. Scream promos, those are perfect example. I think it's gonna be the next topic for our next Pokemon episode. And I don't remember how I even saw that. I think maybe like some predator video, he just happened to mention the word Scream promos. Like, I don't know what that means. Let me look it up as like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, this card is definitely gonna go up in value. You know, it's very limited. They had like an art exhibit and the, the card is just to commemorate that. And so then I purchased the whole mess of them from Japan. Uh, so uh, basically, you know, do some research and then try to stay up to date with what's coming out and don't buy into, like when everyone's talking about it, Usually means it's too late. Uh, so I guess obviously, like, it's not exactly good advice. We have, it's kind of obvious they had the curve. Uh, Juan asks, first Pokemon video game you played? I played Pokemon Red. I don't think I got it when it first came out. Maybe a little bit after. Uh, and uh, oh God, that game was so good. Um, I have a confession. My starter was Bulbasaur. The reason being, remember like, like. Obviously now everything's on the internet, you watch a YouTube video about how to play a game, but back in the day, it was like you could buy a guide, and at the time, Nintendo Power Magazine. My brother was subscribed to that, and we would get the Pokemon, it was like a monthly part, like, alright, we're gonna walk you through how to get through Mount Moon or something. I think I tried to do it in the dark, it was terrible. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think somewhere it said, alright, if you, maybe it was even in the instructions, they kind of gave a piece of advice, like, oh, if you want a easier start you should start Bulbasaur Rash reason being you know it'll be easy to defeat Brock and Misty the first two uh, gym leaders and so I was like hmm you know what? I need to edge over my siblings I'm going Bulbasaur <laughs> and not Squirtle um, but then after that I played gold and then didn't really play anything until sword and shield uh, let's see vicious rockstar he's the one that won a booster box giveaway for this thousand thousand sub celebration congrats again how long have you been playing pokemon for yeah around the base set time saitama oh this is an interesting one <coughs> do you think the tag team all-star cards will ever come to english i really want the gold rushes art in english but gx's are no longer in the sets anymore yes you know i think the way i kind of i try to rationalize thing in the head like all right what what was the what is the reason pokemon company would do this and that is a very interesting situation because there was obvious demand. I, you're definitely not alone for wanting those cards. Uh, quick tangent, like I personally not a big fan of them. I don't like the idea of 
creating a new max rarity after the fact. Um, so, for example, like the Reshizard <laughs> is like a double wound, or like I even I purchased some of them and like oh my gosh, then the price went down organically. Then you introduce a new max rarity, like it doesn't sit well. I think it's very different when it comes to the alternate arts, especially when they're almost all given away as promos. Um, so I feel like that's that's like good for so many reasons and new max rarities I dislike uh, for different reasons. But back to your question, it's very interesting because obviously there's demand for those cards, but so why is it that the next set, next set after Hidden Fates is Champion's Path, which is obviously V and not GX. Like what could be the reason? Uh, maybe it's like, all right, we have to, um, I, the success, I'm guessing Sword and Shield game is doing well and like the new uh, new region, new gen, uh, we wanted to capitalize that on that with this new set, Champion's Path, boom. And intentionally skipping all the stuff that was in Tag All-Stars, for what reason? We got a sprinkle of it with the Umbreon, uh, Umbreon Darkrai, Espeon uh, Deoxys box, uh, the Dedene has already been featured in the toolkit. So we're like, stuff has come out. The one thing that could make sense to me, but I do think it's kind of a missed opportunity is, I wasn't around the time, but my understanding is like kind of like a best of XY product, I think called the, referred to as Boxy, uh, where it kind of, I think it's the one that had like the alternate RN, had a Shaman EX in there, um, bunch of promos and stuff, and like these deck boxes and stuff like that. Maybe that's for like, there's gonna be a sun and moon version of that. That would kind of make sense, but it's still kind of like a missed opportunity. Like it would have made sense if after Hidden Fates is Tag All Stars, and I think it would have done pretty well. Not nearly like the home run masterpiece as Hidden Fates, but they opted for Champions. What is Champions Path? And if that's at least that kind of makes sense in my head, and that's like if that's the reason, I feel like that was a mistake. Because uh, I'm, or I'm with you. But also kind of not with you <laughs> as far as wanting those those gold cards i think the only time that i'm in favor of new max rarity is for stuff like the new gold gold willaboom the new frost mob i really love the idea or i think it's a big gap in the collector side where the max rarity stuff is limited to the gx or limited to the v that doesn't make sense so i guess it is after the fact but it's not like people were really hurting for you know, uh, frost moths. And it's not like they couldn't get it. Then they introduce Max Ray. That's just like a collector sign. I'm okay with that. The gold rushes are less, less, uh, less of a fan of. But good question. I'm very curious to see what happens. Uh, I kind of doubt it'll be completely skipped. Cody asks, why do you like turtles so much? Yep, so I was about four years old in Florida. A complete stranger offered me from a vending, the thing they wanted from the vending machine. Here's a cute turtle. And man, that was very nice of him. What do you do for a job? I am a software engineer. DJ Nas asks, do you think you'll ever get rid of your Pokemon card collection for any reason? Example, money. Um, I'm very confident in saying I will always retain a good part of my collection uh, at least like you know the some of the the more prized stuff uh, for you know whether it's because it's expensive or because it has sentimental value I am very confident I'll keep some of it uh, I could see myself selling off a good portion based on like as my life kind of transition to whatever stages like like I don't know if I were to like get married, have kids, buy a house or something like that, I could see, all right, in order for me to transition to that, you know, when it comes to like saving money, obviously I could have saved a lot more money if I wasn't doing this stuff. So, you know, maybe that helped transition to new, becoming a real adult, let <laughs> me phrase it like that. Uh, so I could definitely see that being the case. And last question, Charizard Master asks, congrats on reaching 1,000 subs. Q&A, what inspired you to start your channel? Great question, Charizard Master is a, another PokeTuber. Recommend you check him out. And um, let's see, what inspired me? So, to be honest, I don't remember what got me to just look up. Something happened, and it's like, oh, you know what? I have some Pokemon cards. Let me just see what what uh, what a Charizard's for. That must be expensive. I looked it up. I think 
this is our back to like you know do some research before you make any purchases don't do uh don't buy into the hype don't make impulsive decisions do your research make informed decisions uh and that's like just like googled it it's like oh on amazon of all places don't recommend buying cards on amazon uh but it's like how oh, charizard for a hundred dollars i was like what the heck that's crazy i think uh it would have been appropriate to spend like a hundred dollars like 20 years ago i'm gonna give me one and i bought it and then i was like wait a minute i could buy this on ebay for like 40 to, for 50 dollars half the price and then i think i actually bought one for like all three base set starters for um for a hundred dollars so in a time like i think that what's got me re-hooked was like this was like a cherished part of my childhood um and like it felt like that stuff was so cheap and <laughs> lucky for me it kind of was uh for especially how old it was and how nostalgic it was for so many people so then for i don't know i can't remember it's 2018 2017 i was like all right give me as many as i can find charizards on ebay for for as low as like 40 dollars none of them are mint you know they're not uh if i get them graded a lot of them would be like seven maybe sixes maybe an eight if we're lucky but i was picking them up for like 40 50 60 dollars uh, like <laughs> all day all day every day kind of thing um and then i was like hmm, you know what? let me see what what's going on with new sets and uh so then i purchased like a bunch of sun and moon boxes and i was just cracking them ironically i think i was watching youtube videos of other pack openings while i was opening mine it's like i was just having a blast i was kind of thinking you know what I wonder what are the chances you know i could get my phone record it as well put it on youtube and just see what happens on uh, uh, 600 days 855 videos later here we are uh so <laughs> that's that and that was the last question once again thank you all for the support on the channel thank you for getting us across this 1000 sub threshold it feels amazing to be here and yeah again like it's all passion that's why that's why i do it and um yeah thank you all for the support thank you all for the questions um huge shout out to yeah all the subs everyone that watches the videos even if you're not subbed uh whether you like or thumbs down like you know either way appreciate you taking the time you shout out to everyone in the discord everyone that attends our twitch streams especially those that are subbed to the channel huge shout out to my patrons thank you for the support and uh yeah that's gonna do it oh, i'm wanna turtle i'll catch you guys next time please tell me this recorded